Hello, everyone, and welcome to the full moon in Leo, January the 25th, 2024. We are coming down to the end of the month. There is just so many things that are taking place. January has been um, a kind of crazy month with lots of energy. And it's so funny because it just appears so funny how humanity is, because it's just so many things that just appear to be um, like moving underneath the like underneath the awareness of what we see uh, or what we're allowed to see or what is being given to us to see on a world scale. And so there's a lot of things that has been taking place throughout, well, throughout our lifetimes, but throughout this year throughout this month that has been kind of like under slipping under the rug type of thing, kind of passing underneath. And it does feel like as we move forward and we move into February, we're going to see a, we're going to see some of this stuff come to life. As I noticed, like I'm all sideways. Why am I all sideways? On top of that, you are in the, we are in the blur because we are in my bedroom. As I, I will be, when you're watching this video, I will be in that bed recovering or just trotting around but I will be recovering from my back surgery. Um, and so I'm getting this video recorded prior to so that you have it. I feel like I'm like a ghost. So I feel, yeah, I feel like I'm like a ghost using, I don't like, everyone who knows me knows I do not like these backdrops. I don't like using them. I don't like them. I don't like anything that kind of gives the illusion of something that it's not <laughs> my thing. Um, and so there's a, it just feels like, as we move through this moon, this moon has a, this full moon has a, a powerful, powerful punch to it, has a powerful energy to it. It has a lot of strength though. Like it has a lot of strength and it, it, it requires a lot of courage. And so this moon speaks of requiring courage. And so having the courage to look at what we don't want to see, having the courage to see things that, that we, that we have to face, but also being being very aware that this is when kind of secrets come out. So you may be experiencing things in your life of where, you know, old, old, unhealed, unresolved issues of the past may start to enter into your awareness. You may have been going through layers and layers and layers of healing work, but all of a sudden this just, this narrative just pops up. Something just pops in. A lot of this comes with body healing as well. If you're doing a lot of body healing, well, somatic work is that there is a, um, you know, you just hit that point. And I just remember a few years ago when I was writing, I just remember doing, um, I was doing some trauma training and during the trauma training, I literally was like, just touching my arm and just holding my arms like this. And instantly I start to have these flashbacks and something started to come into my awareness that, that I had no recollection of on a, on the, you know, in my, in my consciousness, in my awareness of my life and my truth. But the moment I started to see it, it did, it, I knew how real it was. And I knew that it was something that was, that I was ready to see. I was ready to experience, ready to finally heal something and that it had an impact. It influenced my life. It influenced my growth. Pause. I'm sorry about my dogs. Um, someone was at my door at the wrong address. Uh, and so, and so this healing, this, you know, things arising, things coming up. And it's kind of the things that, you know, it's like that saying coming out of the woodwork. And it's not that it's coming out of the woodworking, it's not that it's coming in to surprise you. Is that for many, you're becoming who you need to be to be able to deal with the things you need to deal with, or to be able to see them in a different light, to experience them in a different light. Um, for myself, it was one of those situations where in my healing, where I really looked in with through the eyes of who I was today and with such compassion for the little girl and having that compassion for the little girl and just, you know, really recognizing that nobody in that situation was who they are, who they, no one is today who they were then. Um, and so several times during the healing or through writing um, more than existing, writing the foot, writing my first, <laughs> writing my first book, writing more than existing, was that nowhere in writing this book, um, you know, was it about looking at everyone as 
who they were in the past. It was really looking from who we are today and that, you know, we all were different versions of ourselves in the past. Now that doesn't make things, um, that doesn't make things excusable. That doesn't excuse behaviors or it doesn't discount any healing work that you need to do. And that's why my truth of existing beyond reflections that your story, your version of the story, how you experience things in your life is going to probably be different than other family members and different than, uh, you know, other people, but it's how you, it's your experience. And so it's, it's being able to see it through the eyes of who we are, but then also being able to, um, to really truly look in and say, you know, it really wasn't right. So say into the younger version of self or whatever version of ourselves that the, this things are rising. It could even be another lifetime. Um, is to really look at it and just go, you know, it never, two wrongs never make a right. That not that behavior was never right. But being able to say to the younger version of yourself, I see you. And that it was never okay for anyone to speak to you that way. It was never okay for anyone to grab you that way. It was never okay for anyone to, you know, it was never okay for that, for that situation to have ever been able to, um, to have happened. And, and so it's an acknowledgement is I see you, I hear you, Opopono, right? So it's that sense of just acknowledging that self. And I love you enough to no longer carry that as a, as something that I have to be critical of myself, hard on myself, judging myself, that I can free myself from this experience. I am safe with me. I am safe with me. I am safe with myself. And being safe with myself means that I can let myself be me. I can allow myself to be my truth. And now this is this is given a gist and a basic. It doesn't mean that it, you know, it's in no way meaning that we don't deal with the things that we need to deal with. I, I'll always say you need a good team, right? We need a very good team, a very good support team to help us through any situation that's arising, anything that's coming up in our lives. And, you know, wherever that support team is for you, psychologists, a good, you know, family doctor, your your life coaches, your spiritual guides and mentors, like all of us all have a purpose and a place of where we fit into people's lives. Um, if we if we are aligned to you, right? If there is an alignment to that. And so these these energies and this is really truly speaking to us. And you're really seeing um like I trained, I did my past life healing training back when Doreen Virtue had Angel University, I think it was like operated out of Australia. So years ago, and I did my past life regression training through Doreen years ago. And it's, you know, and it's really, truly like now we're seeing, you know, people really wanting to really dive into their past life. It's not that it hasn't been popular. It's not that it hasn't been like something we've been continually using, but all of a sudden it's like, it's hitting a new wave. It's hitting a new generation. Um, It's just kind of finally like, it's, it's when we're ready. It is truly when we are ready to awaken to the awareness of these things exist. And so as we move through this full moon energy, as this moon, moon energy moves us, is that there is that shift of, there is new wave of information coming in. We're seeing a new wave of, um, of information coming in from out here, from our guides, from, um, from the wise ones. And we're being given this information and this knowledge either through just, you know, believing it to be ourselves. I think this, I need to do this. I feel like I need to do this. Um, and so that, that thought that you're having, that you feel the need to finally do these things in your life, that's often coming from the higher self. It's coming from a higher consciousness. It's coming from your guides. The guardian angels are a huge part of this stage of the game of where we are moving. Just being, you know, being there to kind of hold us as we walk this journey, hold us if we walk through some of this pain journey, this journey through this next uh, stage of life. And as all things, as all things come to an end, as does the pain of letting go. So there is the pain of letting go that is really coming in beyond this full moon coming into the end of January and kind of following through. We've just come through that Pluto shift into Aquarius. Um, and it's, and it is a big major shift, a sense of 
kind of like a whole new sense of self for many, depending on even your sign, um, what your astrological sign is. You know, there's just so many aspects of that 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 play into this. But it doesn't mean that it, it's like the 20th comes. It doesn't go, oh, wow, the 20th is here. This is shifted. Now my whole life has changed. It means action and it requires action. So it's really requiring a lot of action to be put into that journey that you make with your, that journey, that commitment that you make into having that journey with yourself, into self. So it is a, it is a inward journey. It is, it's a, it's a introspective inter yeah introspective it's that introspective view it's like you're really looking into that self and exploring deeper into the self and what that self really needs um as for myself i noticed there there's a lot of things coming up that where i don't fully reveal or show all of who i am i don't share all of my work in the public um i find myself being a lot more reserved when i speak in here or these places and I save it all for when I'm teaching in classes and when I'm working in groups where I, I feel that sense of feeling safe. And that is because of that sense of one of my biggest healing things was the fear of being mocked and mimicked and being made fun of. And it was one of my biggest healings that I had to go through. Um, and I'd always have that false confidence and I appear to be super confident. And I am confident on a spiritual level, I'm confident. I know who I am. I know me. I trust me. I trust my work. Um, but being uh, the shadow aspect of it. And so that shadow aspect of it, of being judged, being mimicked, being mocked, it was like a lifetime of being made fun of. And a lot of times it's in, it's in humor. It's supposed to be humor, but yet it's hurtful. And so that journey and throughout life was a big part of the healing that I had to walk. And I noticed that I'm really feeling that call to let all of that self out. One of my videos that is in here was my channeling through the galactic energy or through the, yeah, through the galactic energy and having that conversation with the, with the galactic realm. And so um, working through realm energy and really truly connecting to that was, you know, it's where our brave hearts. So this moon and through this stage is that like the wizard of Oz. This is like the Wizard of Oz, that parts of yourself that you have lost this next year is about finding those aspects of self, restoring that sense of the virtuous self and bringing that virtuous self back in. I don't know why my lights keep going so mimicky, so funny, um, and bringing that virtuous self in and not letting it be contaminated by our vices. And the vices are our excuses, our butts, our, you know, our explanation to why we can't do anything or why we can't be this person or um and so i just feel like it's like that sense of excuses be gone excuses be gone um ridding ourselves of that kind of of that kind of fear story that unleashed wild run wild kind of fear that runs us wild that keeps us from being able to stay connected to ourselves and but that vices and vices are that which that which is crippling it is the insecurities. It is the fear. It is the it's the isms and the addictive behaviors and the old patterns and the you know the justifying. Like, oh well, that's just who I am. No, no, it's not. It's not who, just who we are. It's who we become. And so we become what we create for our survival, for our safety, for our protection, um, for our sense of of value, worth, validation. And this is where all of this is really beginning to crumble on a on a bigger scale. And on this bigger scale, it's just this moon is shining a light and just saying, you know, you're loved enough. You're loved enough to just take off all of that and just let yourself be you and let that truth really ride into your life. And so there is a sense of, you know, no more buts, no more, no more try explaining, justifying. It's the sense of just saying, no, now I'm at a point where I really know that I need to do this. I really know I want to walk this journey. I really know who I need to, you know, I really know that there's something over here for me and I'm going, I really have to start walking towards it. And it's life begins to come towards you. Once you decide that life starts to walk towards you. Let me see what the cards have to say. And let's just chat with the cards for a moment and just check out this energy and see what we got going on. Let's do a full 
full, let's do a full moon reading. So, I'm going to go with the angels. I'm going to go with angel wisdom. Think about this full moon. So this brings taking the next step, bold and ambitious choices, partnering with others who share your dreams, expanding your plans, continue to move forward. And that is the beautiful thing about, um, one of the beautiful things about past life healing is that we can, we can watch it unfold as if we're watching a movie, but not having to step in and not having to go all the way back in, not having to, you know, talk about it all over and over and over again, not having to rehash it, but to see, to see the whole situation, to kind of see from the eyes of who we are today, instead of existing in our past and being able to view it with a whole new, to get, to gain that new perspective, but to also be able to pick out the treasures what we're what we recognize is not really any longer our truth what is no longer holding us back or what's been holding us back but shouldn't be holding us back because it it's had that power so we claim back that pieces of ourselves we claim back that piece of the power and so that we continue to move forward so no matter no matter what's happening our life is moving forward regardless so when we say I've just been stuck in the past. I can't move on. You have been moving on. It is the language that you use to communicate to yourself. And what you're saying to yourself is I can't move on, but yet you have always been moving on. Yet there has never been a time of where you are not moving on because you have been moving. The world is moving each and every day, moments, times, nothing ever stays the same. One minute to the next is not the same. There is something that is moving, shifting. And so it's only the illusion of that you have stayed in the same. Now your environment, the people around you, you know, those type of things may still be very much the same, but you, you have been moving with the time. And so new thoughts have been there. You just don't want to hear them. You don't want to listen to them. You don't want to take action towards the change. Those are the places of where we get trapped and stuck. And so this is where it is the time to the end of the month coming into this 25th, moving forward, especially with February and the Lunar New Year, is that this is where we begin to take those take those steps. And steps don't mean take big leaps. It says steps. So it can be baby steps. So it's where we, you know, we make a choice, we make a decision. And I feel like this, by this time in January, you're already thinking some things that you really want to do for you. You may have been already starting the momentum of momentum building up to do something. And it's, it takes, it all it requires is one baby step. And sometimes that step is to say yes to you. And so it is the beginning of taking a step, a new step, a leap a leap for some people, right? Some people may be ready for a leap because you've maybe, you may have taken hundreds of steps, but it may be baby steps. Whatever it may be, is just knowing that you have the guide with you. You have the guardians with you. You have the angels with you. You have all that you need and that you are rooted. You have the, you have a rooting system. You have a cheerleading system that is, that is cheerleading team that is working on your behalf so that you can do this. Now, this is fire and this is Archangel Zedekiel. And that burning desire, that earthly kind of, you know, that rumble in the earth, that volcano waiting to erupt. Now, if you see this tree, it may have been cut down, but there's new life. So, you know, you may, something may have not worked out for you. You may have been in an ending. You may be still caught in an, a past experience, but, you know, staying in, staying in the, the story all the time you can't see that new growth is growing. And so there is new growth. There is new energy. There is new moments. There's new days and new opportunities that are here to really help you. So I just feel like being a Leo, being a fire sign is Leo has that compassionate, <laughs> compassionate, friendly kind of boost. 
Uh, it kind of, like I said, it's the resurrection of our virtues. That's really what's coming up for us. It is, it is that which restores our sense of, of the virtues within us. Um, and so Leo kind of has that sense of familiarity, a sense of comfort, seeking comfort, looking for comfort. But if we look for comfort in the old, we can never get to the new. So seeking and knowing that the comfort is in you, that you are safe with you, that you can move forward because you've been hanging out with you for a long time. And so it's now time to know that you can move forward with what you have, you. It might not be the ideal version of you yet, but you're ready. And so whatever that may, wherever that may be in your life, it could be something small or it could be something big. It doesn't always have to be something big. It can be something very simple for you. It can be something very lighthearted for you. Um, but it is the next step. It's moving into a next step. We got the wise counselor. See, I said the wise ones are here with us. So we have this wise one energy that is also here with us. And this beautiful wise one energy is bringing in this sense of, you know, that really, truly, like I've said early in the beginning, was really, truly working with your team, whether it, whether it's your angels, whether it is, you know, your spiritual mentor, counselor, guide, like myself, um, whether it is a, you know, psychologist, your life coach, all of those things, or, or your community, because going forward in 2024 is about building community. It's about working together and it is about support and, you know, really, truly questioning a lot of authority type of behavior attitude. So even if you got that little bossy or that little insecure self that just goes, no, we don't do that. We don't hang out with those kind of people. We don't do. It's like even question that within yourself and ask yourself where that's coming from. Um, and so this is where we kind of are given some, I feel like some new wisdom, like I said to you, new wisdom, new tools, um, new information that may be coming into your awareness as you're beginning to, uh, access, tap into, um, a higher sense of knowing, a higher calling, uh, a new level of awareness for yourself and for moving forward. And it's, this energy is saying that, you know, it's our guides have us. So don't worry about falling. Don't worry about falling or failing. You know, those are words. Those are, that's the language we use to keep ourselves from trying. And as long as we start trying, as long as we start to put effort in, as long as you start to take steps towards uh, something new, being courageous, like I said, the Wizard of Oz, it's finding our brains and our hearts and our, you know, our courage, our strength, all of those things, getting to the Emerald City, right? Getting to this place, this magical place that we believe is outside of ourselves, but it's actually within you. And so it's something that's within you and finding your way to there, because we'll look everywhere, we'll look everywhere outside of yourself for that treasure, for that special something, for that thing that makes you happy, fills you with joy, but it actually exists in you. And that's where the virtues take us back home to that self and brings us back into that self. And we've been so miss, you know, we, we get so miss, we get so lost or misguided, I guess. We get so lost in that duality between being divided between our, you know, what is what is right what is wrong doing good doing wrong and we're we're afraid we're going to mess up we're afraid we're going to get in trouble well often that comes from still from your childhood story that comes from your childhood teachings that comes from your childhood sunday school classes it comes from all of those places. it comes from your parents your grandparents all those places and so sometimes we fear that or we rebel against it and often when we're rebelling against that the only person you're really rebelling against now is this that's inside of you and when you're so, trying so hard to be that good one, that good girl, that good boy, is that you're seeing that you were already probably good. You were there. You were were really not not a good person, and that you're starting to discover that what am I trying to prove, and who am I trying to prove this to? Now, of course, there is so much energy that's happening, and like I said, there's a there's a smorgasbord of energy. It is the good, bad, and the ugly. And we're existing in the good, bad, and the ugly. And it's why it's so important to see our own light, to see the good within ourselves, to know that you are good. And so there's too much going on and we have too much going on here. And with the too much going on, it, it can be very distracting. Um, and so you may feel like you're 
you know, you may have this anxious feeling in you. You may be feeling the energy. There's a lot of, you know, um, electromagnetic energy that's happening. We also, we have a lot of solar flares, a lot of the earth, uh, the earth, um, Schumer resonance, like all of this stuff. There is just so much that's happening because we are, it's like what the way I see it, I see like those, uh, the earth's plates are moving is what I see. It. And I'm like, this hasn't, and I know I'm not no scientist or nothing like this, but this is evolution. And this is just like we are evolving. The earth is also evolving. And so the earth is moving again. The earth is shifting. The earth got changes that's happening. <coughs> Excuse me. And that's what they're showing me. And we're seeing these movement of plates. We're seeing things open, separate. So, you know, there's separation of land. There's opening. There's volcanoes, there's earthquakes, there's tornadoes, there's all this energy. Well, we also have all that that happens in us and in our lives where separation happens, come together happens. We make alliances over here. We break free of this over here. We make new alliances here. We build community here. We, we stop trying to be our own little island and our own little world and stop trying to do those things. Or we have to step a little bit into our own little world for a little bit. Whatever it may be is there's a lot of movement. And there's a lot of movement of energy. So there's a lot of things that's happening, a lot of things that's going on. And to really, you know, really look at it in a way of saying, you know, do I really need to, um, do I really need to get too over involved in trying to do too many things at once? Am I good at multitasking or am I not? And this card, I got to show you. See what just walked across my desk. Look. Expect the unexpected. And there's my little ladybug. Now I'm li I live in I live in Alberta and it's actually very, very, very cold, like minus 20 something. When I'm recording this, ladybugs don't live in the winter here, but they but they definitely try to get into homes. So they get into our homes and they find the most southern point where the sun shines the most. And they that's where they kind of try to stay for the winter months. And so randomly during the winter you'll see ladybugs so there's always a reason and a why to kind of a lot of things in our lives and then some things have no reason and no why um and so luck can be on our side this ladybug is right on me so luck can be on our side um and we could have multiple changes in our lives but this really requires us to have act to take action steps and to be moving forward in our lives um and so, yeah, so what are you going to do about it, right? What are we going to do? What action am I going to take? What baby step can I take towards living my best life? Um, and, and for some of you, I just feel like there's a gr grand opportunities that are going to begin to show up. I don't know where the ladybug just went. Um, there's grand opportunities that are going to begin to appear, show up. You may get all of a sudden an offer of a lifetime. And it doesn't mean it's happening right away, but the energy of it is breaking open. So breaking open is like the, the uh the surprise package and as it breaks open there's a lot of good things that are blended in there along with the things that are not always so pretty because we are in endings but in endings and new beginnings are both happening at the same time so because there may be endings happening in one area of your life new beginnings may be happening in another place within your life and so there is that movement between you know between this and that and so there's a lot of this and that energy that's happening and this moon is just like just really, truly um, a moon of inspiration. I always, so the way I see it is like Leo is the middle child of the fire signs. Aries has that, that first child, the, <laughs> um, and, and it's like the middle child kind of tries to please everyone, tries to make everyone happy. Be very aware that this moon will want you to try to be, you know, trying to please all parts of yourself or trying to make everything work trying to, you know, trying to make everything happen at once or trying to be too involved. And it's like, sometimes you just got to realize that being too nice or being too pleasing or being too over, you know, too over invested may sometimes leave us being um, not serving our, it may not be serving our highest good. So being aware of how much we're giving, how much we have to give and asking ourselves, am I absolutely sure this is for me? This is what I need to do. But because like I said, the vices can really, truly contaminate the virtues. And so there is kindness, but there is there is overdoing it. And why I'm overdoing it. <laughs>
Who do I think I need to be? Who am I trying to please? Who am I trying to, you know, why do I feel the need to keep, you know, do, ex giving more than I, than I have to give? Be aware of all of those things, virtues versus vices. Vices is what takes us to our isms, our unhealthy habits, our trauma responses, right? Our addic addictive patterns and behaviors, all those things exist in our vices. Virtues set us free. Virtues have a purity. It has a sense of just a strong conviction of just knowing and trusting that we are safe with ourselves, able to be this self. And we don't have to look over our shoulders. We don't have to keep checking back in. We don't have to keep asking, am, am, you know, am I sure that's right? We, we can let go of doubt. We can let go of those insecurities. We can let go of those fears because when we learn to trust ourselves on such a level that we know the things that we're doing is for the right reason, then it may not always be pretty. It may not always seem right to others, but it feels totally right. And it feels like it's moving us in the right direction. Um, it's the same thing as being, you know, that sense of being over empathetic versus being compassionate and really caring. If we want to see our children grow into beautiful, healthy children by, and by giving them everything they want when they have a tantrum on the floor and give me that and I want it now. And so, so to avoid the fight, to avoid the tantrum, you give in and you give that, then you are giving in and you're not teaching that future adult what they need. So it's the same thing when your little tantrums are happening, when you're having those little meltdowns, sometimes we got to stand up to ourselves and say, really, what do you think you're doing? And why do you think you're doing that? Because if we want to be the best human that we can be, we truly have to first level up, hold ourselves accountable, be responsible for our own actions, our own words and our own thoughts. And nobody's coming in to save us. You know, you have to be your own savior, but also knowing you got a lot of support to help ride you through that journey. But it's time to get over the tantrums, time to get over trying to, you know, master manipulate your own energy. And really, truly, what do I need to restore? What part of myself do I need to find? And, you know, and break free of the mask of wearing the illusions of, because those, those illusions, you, anyone who's really taken the journey, anyone who's really in their truest, truest of self can see beyond anything that is false. So imitation light being exposed real true light being seen and um, and truly honoring that within ourselves is that it's so easy to be tricked and fooled by the imitation. And the more that you try to be somebody else, why would you want to be the imitation of somebody else when you can truly be the truest version of you? Why be second best to yourself, to yourself? Because you have nothing else and no one else to compete with. I send you so much love. Have a beautiful full moon. And I will see you all very soon. Much love. Bye-bye.